All right, everybody, John here with Crypto Top 10, coming at you with some uh, trending articles in the crypto news space. As always, straight off the top, thank you to everyone who subscribed by hitting that nice little button wherever you might find it. I really do appreciate it. And pop on down to the description, check out the links to the articles I'm going to talk about today, so that way you can do your own research. Uh, not too much craziness going on here on the 19th of November. Uh, Bitcoin is actually uh, down a little bit on the day or up a little bit on the day, depending on exactly where you're seeing the price. It's uh, it's pretty flat. Ethereum had a nice spike and then a flash crash, but it seems to be recovering okay. Uh, we'll talk about both a little bit later on the video, but uh, yeah, let's hop in and take a look at some of the trending stuff. A quick update on Uniswap. Uh, for those of you who didn't see the video yesterday, uh, Uniswap just ceased its yield farming incentive program for uh, four of their uh, pools. Now, rival automated market makers like One Inch, Sushi Swap, and Bancor are snapping up the liquidity providers with targeted rewards. Literally, they're pro they're promoting the same exact pools that. Uh, Uniswap used to have, as of yesterday, they no longer do, and attempting to gain some market share, SushiSwap did double. Um, so SushiSwap's total value locked, or TVL, plummeted by uh, over a billion dollars in less than 24 hours. Uh, it's record high of $3.07 billion locked in the protocol on November the 14th. Uniswap's current TVL is right around 1.3, so almost a 60% decrease just because those pools have gone away. Uh, on November the 18th, so all that fun stuff, One Inch launched the second stage of its yield farming incentives, allocating an additional 1% of its token supply to liquidity providers, making its move. Uh, Sushi Swamp straight up offered the exact same pools that Uniswap had, uh, and that's what contributed to their doubling. Uniswap's had a, not a similar increase, but they've definitely gone up as users are moving over to the platform because, you know, they want them sweet, sweet gains. Uh, so blockchain-powered streaming platform and Uni token holder Audius submitted a governance proposal the day that the mining program ended on the 17th. And the proposal has already nearly passed its first round of voting, but uh, it's got to get through uh, two more stages and secure at least 40 million votes to be implemented. Since decentralizing governance on September the 16th, Uniswap has actually failed to pass any government proposals. So it remains to be seen if they'll be able to marshal the 40 million votes they need. Honestly, 40 million is a pretty tall order. I think one of the failed proposals was someone trying to lower that threshold to more like 30 million, so it'd be a little bit easier to hit as of yet. It hasn't gone through. In fact, none has gone through. So uh, keep an eye on Uniswap, especially if you're holding it. It's not crashed, or at least it hadn't crashed as bad as I thought it was going to. As of yet, if you have faith in the protocol, it might be time to pick up some on discount. So if you do, please make sure you are voting in that pool so that way they can reopen those uh, liquidity mining incentives. But hopping on over, second DeFi protocol we got to touch on today, Urine Finance just passed up $27,000. Uh, surging, surging on Thursdays as traders assessed its acceptance of MakerDAO as a collateral asset. Yeah, I mean, that's a pretty smart move. Uh, you know, Urine has had a really um, rocky, rocky is not a good word, volatile start of its life, uh, spiking all the way up into the 40,000s of dollars and then back all the way down to seven. Uh, things to be turning around, and it actually looks like the token could be in a steady bull run scenario. Uh, their bullish bias from all those fun independent and analysisists on Twitter, uh, you know, they're talking about urine finances growth as a decentralized asset management platform, uh, primarily after it started making pretty beneficial updates to its protocol. Uh, we talked about them earlier. 
in the week that they actually passed four YIP proposals or yield improvement proposals. Uh, their effective integration into urine finances protocol enabled new fee structures, Wi-Fi enabled reward distributions, quarterly financial audits, operations funding, and also a buyback program. So if they have any leftover funds, the Wi-Fi team can actually buy back some of their tokens. Pretty darn nice. They haven't said anything about that they would be burning them. More than likely, they would be holding on to them as well. But that, along with MakerDAO accepting Wi-Fi to open collateralized debt positions and mint stablecoin DAI, has definitely made it so that way uh, it's going to be around for a little bit and it seems to be pretty good. Uh, so the Urine Finances weekly newsletter stated, the acceptance of Wi-Fi on MakerDAO system is an important milestone for the Urine ecosystem and it opens up the possibility that Wi-Fi can be used to mint DAI in the upcoming version to Y vaults that utilize Wi-Fi as its base asset. Uh, urine seems to be making some pretty good moves. Uh, we don't talk about Ave a lot, but they've also made some pretty good moves. And I think that is the reason uh, coins like Yearn and Ave are growing, while coins like Uniswap and SushiSwap and a lot of these others are kind of on the decline right now. It comes down to how effectively the community and the people behind the community are managing the platform, the program, and if they have a long-term goal in mind. I think that's the most important thing, honestly. It's one of the reasons why I love pro projects like Ethereum and Cardano. There is a clear direction and clear goals that they are trying to reach for. Even if they don't hit those goals in time, the fact that they exist is way better than just investing in some crypto that's like, yeah, we're going to do this. Okay, well, how are you going to achieve that? Oh, you know, adoption. That, that means nothing. You need to actually like put forward a plan, like who are you going to approach? What are you going to do? And as the crypto space matures, that's only going to become more and more important. And that's why I personally invest in cryptos with long-term strategies. Though, again, I'm some guy in my basement. Don't just do things because I tell you to. This is for entertainment. Do your own research. Uh, hopping on over. Hey, got a little update on OKEX. You'll be able to withdraw your money from it soon. Yay! Unrestricted uh, by the 27th of this month. So one of OKEX's private key holders, for those of you who don't know, has just finished assisting the authorities in a previously referenced investigation, i.e. one of OKEX's high ups who holds the private keys for a lot of their wallets got picked up from the Chinese popo. China is notorious for uh, people just kind of disappearing. So this created a lot, I mean, a lot of uncertainty on what was going on, uh, if he was going to be thrown in jail or whatnot. Seems he's done. They, they picked him up. Uh, OKEX was confirmed not to be involved in any wrongdoing or illegal activities. So the private key holder has now returned to his normal business functions. So yay, good. Uh, so. They're claiming that, yeah, you'll be able to withdraw 100% of user funds without any restrictions after withdrawals are reopened. And simultaneously, they will also be launching significant user loyalty reward campaigns to express our deep apologies and our sincere gratitude for our community. Makes sense. Things got really scary for a minute for OKEX and people had money on the exchange. So let's uh, be pretty aggressive in getting people to stay makes sense to me. But yeah, China's uh, been cracking down on a lot of things. We'll actually be talking about that a little bit later in the, the update. But yeah, having one of your private key holders cooperate with public security bureaus and investigations while not being able to do its business functions, it's a little unsettling, but I'm glad that OKEX was able to come out the other side Ideally, mostly unscathed, but we will see. Alrighty, well, hopping on over. Uh, yeah, as we talked about a little bit earlier in the video, Ethereum had a bit of a flash drop. 40 bucks. Uh, it doesn't seem like it's hurting anything too much, though, on its move towards the eventual retaking of $500. Uh, so, one crypto asset trader did note that even after the drop yesterday, Ethereum remains in an extremely advantageous position on a macro time frame, 
As the chart shows, Ethereum is currently sitting above macro supports, meaning it has room to stretch toward 800 and beyond as it continues to hold the technical levels. So even though it dropped 40 bucks in two minutes, people are kind of like, yeah, okay, but it'll be fine though, uh, considering it's back up to being pretty flat in the past 24 hours. It had a nice spike, had a nice drop, and now we're sitting about even. Eh, whatever. It happens. It's crypto, right? Uh, boosting expectations of a further Ethereum rally is the expectation that soon enough, Ethereum 2.0 will launch. Uh, Ethereum Research found Ethereum Foundation researcher Danny Ryan recently commented on the concerns, which we've talked about extensively on this channel, that the Ethereum 2 deposit contract won't get enough in deposits to actually trigger the launch. It's something I've talked about, and he gives an interesting uh, perspective on it. And he says, and I do quote, I personally think that for the initial launch, that 100k plus Ethereum in the contract is sufficient, and that adjusting the threshold down to not leave ETH in limbo for too long does make sense. Rewards will be very high for these early adopters, and Ethereum validating will likely grow over time. Planning on adjusting this constant immediately at November 24th or December 1st is a bit aggressive in my opinion. We don't know exactly what will happen in the next couple weeks, so we should just observe first. On that linked to thread, clients engineering teams seem to want to wait through December and adjust the constant at the start of January if need be. This seems reasonable, unquote. Essentially what they're saying is, current. what he's saying is that currently you need, uh, they need, we need, the world needs 524,288 Ethereum deposited into 16,380 some different validators for it to launch. Now what they could do, if that threshold has not been hit by the start of January, they could edit the smart contract to make it that way the threshold has been hit, even if only 100,000, 200,000, or 300,000 Ethereum has been deposited into that contract. That would make the people who deposited their Ethereum into the contract very happy because at that point they would be getting pretty nice returns on their investments, which would then incentivize other people to start piling in. Uh, I have a bit of Ethereum. Um, I do plan on depositing it into a smart contract or a pool, so that way I can get some rewards myself. But I don't want to do that until I know that I'm going to be earning rewards. So there's hopefully a lot of people like me, but honestly not enough to get it to over half a million Ethereum, but maybe enough that uh, it'll take it from 200 to 300. You never know. So we're just gonna have to keep an eye on things, but it looks like those people who've already staked their Ethereum, they won't have to wait more than a few months before they can start seeing rewards. Uh, and a bit of duh news, Binance filed a defamation suit. I mean, it seems like their only avenue. Uh, they are the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange. They just sued Forbes. Yeah, defamation lawsuit against Forbes. So the article, uh, the leaked Tai Chi document. Oh yes, slightly racist. Anyways, it reveals allegedly Binance's elaborate scheme to evade Bitcoin regulators. Uh, they're saying it contains numerous false, misleading, and defamatory statements against Binance. That makes sense. Uh, so the article relies on a document that was thought to be created by a senior executive, executive and believed to have been seen by senior Binance executives. It was reportedly a PowerPoint outlining a plan to set up an American subsidiary, ostensibly its independently operated namesake Binance.us, to distract regulators and then move revenue in the form of licensing fees and more to its parent company, Binance. According to the lawsuit, the defendant's false public statements, misrepresentation, and innuendo that Binance does not comply with applicable law, seeks to invade, evade regulators, and is engaged in activities activity characteristic of money laundering are highly damaging to Binance. Absolutely it is. Uh, the question is going to be, is it true or not? That silence is because, honestly, I don't know. I don't pay that much attention to the corporate shenanigans that go on at the highest levels. It is entirely possible that because no criminal charges have been brought against Binance, uh, this is going to end up becoming a bit of a controversial case the very least it'll be an interesting one because I feel like the bulk of the 
evidence is going to be placed on Forbes because Binance will be able to rely on the fact that they have not been charged with anything. There are no pending court cases about this. So, eh, why are you coming after us? Uh, Forbes did comment simply that it stands by its reporting. So, they knew what they were doing when they published this lawsuit. So, all we can do is keep an eye on it as the Tai Chi document and lawsuit and works its way through the courts. All righty, well, moving on to wrap things up for the day. Uh, some people are starting to think that maybe China is responsible for the current Bitcoin rally, not because they're manipulating the market intentionally or anything like that, but uh, just changing policies in the country. So with control of well over 50%, almost 70% of Bitcoin's hash rate, the Bitcoin mining pools in this Asian country had a great impact on the performance of the network and consequently the crypto market as a whole. This is due to the discounts that miners in China receive on the cost of some services such as electricity. Uh, however, since mid-2020, Chinese authorities have been uh, implementing some pretty tough member measures against crypto exchange platforms in an attempt to reduce money laundering. Uh, just think back to good old OKEX. This has resulted in the closure or suspension of accounts, credit cards, and other payment methods of mining pools. Now, mining pools usually exert great pressure on the price of Bitcoin. Miners sell the crypto to keep their operations afloat, so the Chinese policy that is making it harder for them to sell their crypto means that uh, possibly less of it is hitting the market right now. A QCP Capital, based on information from Wu Blockchain, reports that 74% of miners surveyed in the country has stopped operations for one month. That month seems to kind of coincide with this current uh, bull run. Uh, due to the suspension of a large portion of the miners in China, the selling pressure of Bitcoin could remain pretty low in the short term. Uh, so in that sense, the Bitcoin rally could be prolonged. Experts seem to be leaning towards an all-time high for Bitcoin of around 25k before the end of 2020. As of right now, mining profits have returned to pre-having levels, so even once the miners are able to sell again, they're probably not going to be selling the amounts they were prior to this because they don't need to. Uh, the less you sell, the more you can hold, and the more you can hold, the more you can potentially have 5 or 10 years from now. So really they try to sell as little as possible, but you have to sell a certain amount to be able to pay for all your setup and your electricity. So yeah, in fact, they're saying that a big spike came about when uh, OKEX had their accounts frozen, as that is probably where a lot of miners sell their Bitcoin, which is kind of interesting if you think about it. So yeah, we will see where this goes. I'm perfectly fine. Whatever's causing this bull run, it's been a long time coming. I personally think the Bitcoin price has been pretty depressed with the amount of buying pressure that's on it. But with the amount of selling pressure currently uh, at a lull, we could see some bigger gains before a pullback. Cool. Uh, but that will do it for the trending articles in the crypto news space. Uh, before we go, let's kind of take a look at the top 10 coins by market cap. I always ignore, ignore Tether because Tether doesn't matter. Uh, Bitcoin is down two-thirds of a percent. It's still $17,929.56. Honestly, if it consolidates for a few days or a week, I'm fine with that. We're heading into the weekend. That's typically when you see more volatility in the crypto space, just because less people are actively trading. Um, I would be okay if Bitcoin crashed a little bit, pulled back all the way to you know, 17,000, 16,500, and then brought us into the week ready to climb again. Ethereum is down by 0.4%. It's still in a very healthy spot. Again, consolidation is perfectly okay in this instance. Uh, XRP, Chainlink, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Polkadot, Binance, Cardano, Bitcoin SV are all in the positives with Litecoin being the biggest winner. They're up almost 35% on the week and almost 10% on the day, sitting at $79.07. Good for them. Uh, Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV continue to bleed, which I'm perfectly fine with. I do not care for either of those coins. Uh, anything 
named Bitcoin that isn't actually Bitcoin needs to get out of the top 10 and make room for other protocols that are actually doing something cool. Or we could get wrapped Bitcoin up into the top 10. That's fine. That's fine. But yeah, so my name is John. I'm with Crypto Top 10. This has been the trending articles in the crypto news space. If you've made it to this point and you haven't subscribed, please do. Just hit that little button wherever you're finding this content. And yeah, there's plenty of different ways you can support the channel. And I appreciate any avenue you take, even if it's just listening to my voice. That being said, peace.